Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. So in this video, let us discuss about tissue engineering. Tissue engineering covers a wide range of applications that repair or replaces the portion of damaged tissues like bones, cartilage, blood vessels, skin and bladder. And in this video, I am going to explain you in the case of a bone. So for example, damaged tissues are nothing but this bone is considered as a tissue, right? And once that bone got fractured, then you will consult into the hospital. And once you consult the hospital, then the doctor will do this tissue engineering technique on that particular damaged tissue in such a way that that bone which has been fractured will be recovered. Right? So that recovering of that bone from the fracture, from the damaged position is called as a tissue engineering. Right? And not only the bone, you can, uh, this tissue engineering is also applied for the tissues like cartilage, blood vessels, skin as well as the bladder. Right? And now this tissue engineering, the main goal of this tissue engineering is to develop and to construct the transplantable tissue and to also to produce the better organs for the transplantation. So how this tissue engineering technique is performed? What is the protocol which is present behind this tissue engineering? Each and everything will be explained in detail in this video. So what are the three major components which are mainly used for this tissue engineering? First is cells. Second, scaffold and the third is signaling molecules. And what does these cells mean? Cells includes stem cells. So what are the stem cells? Stem cells, we know that the stem cells are of two types, adult stem cells as well as the embryonic stem cells. But in the case of this tissue engineering, most widely used stem cells are adult stem cells. So why not embryonic stem cells? Why only the adult stem cells? Because adult stem cells has only the capacity to develop the tissue into a new form. Okay, it will develop the new tissue. It the only the adult stem cells has a capacity when compared to that of embryonic stem cells. So adult stem cells are highly preferred for this tissue engineering technique. And these adult stem cells are very very few and even the cell division process will also be done very very uh, slow and even what happens is that only few cells will be formed even when it undergoes the process of the cell division. Okay. And now coming to the scaffold. Scaffold, scaffold is used for the growth and development of the cells. The scaffolds are used for the growth and development of the cells and it also provides the mechanical strength to the cells, right? Majorly used scaffolds are like uh, what we say synthetic, uh, synthetic, uh, what we say synthetic natural scaffold like for example if you take metals, ceramics and polymers. So all of these are nothing but the synthetic natural scaffolds. So these are mainly used for the development and also for the and also providing the mechanical strength for the cells. And now coming to the third one, signaling molecules. So what are the signaling molecules basically? Signaling molecules are nothing but the bioactive molecules or biomolecules like growth factors, hormones and morphogenetic proteins. So this, all of these, all these both scaffold as the signaling molecules will act as a nutrient medium for the cells. So once the cells will be, uh, will be composed with the scaffold as well as the signaling molecules, then the cells undergoes a proliferation. And once the proliferation will be done, then it will get divided rapidly, right? So this acts like a nutrient medium, the scaffold as well as the signaling molecules will act like a nutrient medium for the cells to get divided, to get proliferate. So this is about the components which are mainly required for the tissue engineering. And before entering into the procedure of this tissue engineering, one of the most important thing I wanted to say. So what is that is, uh, from the junior classes we are learning that. So what is that organelles will form the cells and the cells will form the tissues and the tissues forms organs and the organ will form the total organ system where how the human body will be designed so this is how the human body will be designed and this is how the human body is formed actually from which the organelles will form the cells and cells will form the tissue so for in this video you should remember in this topic of the tissue engineering you should remember that the cells will form the tissue right so why this is needed in this procedure of the tissue engineering i am going to explain it later so firstly let us discuss about the procedure of this tissue engineering so in the first step what you are going to do is that you are going to select a patient. So what type of patient you are going to select? I, I have said you before itself. In this case I am going to take a bone. A damaged tissue called as a bone. Right? So we are going to select a patient. And make sure that the patient bone got fractured. So let's say this is a bone which has been got fractured and this bone, uh, uh, this is a bone of that particular patient whose bone got fractured. And this is called as a tissue damage. This is called as a tissue damage because the bone is nothing but the tissue as it got fractured it is called as a damage hence it is called as a tissue damage and now from this fractured bone what you are going to do is that you are going to isolate stem cells from that particular bone right 
so in this way you are going to isolate the stem cells and the stem cells which are going to isolate are nothing but the osteoblasts osteoblasts are nothing but the cells which are related to the bone are called as osteoblasts right so from uh, from this particular fractured bone you are going to isolate the osteoblasts so in the third step what you are going to do now keep these stem cells apart i mean keep this osteoblasts apart and on the other hand what you are going to do is that you are going to take a petri plate empty petri plate or a sculpture plate or a petri dish whatever you want say so on this petri plate you are going to place polymeric scaffold polymeric scaffold so what i have said you in this three components of the tissue engineering scaffold is nothing but it is mainly used for the growth and development of the cells and also provides the mechanical strength for the cells right so firstly you are going to take a petri plate and you are going to place this polymeric scaffold polymeric scaffold so if you see here in the components of this tissue engineering so what are the uh, synthetic what what are the synthetic type of what are the synthetic type of natural scaffolds which have been used like metals ceramics and polymers right and mostly preferred are polymers so that's only the reason i have mentioned here polymeric scaffold so this is your polymeric scaffold and to this polymeric scaffold what you are going to do is that you are going to place the stem cells which has been isolated from the particular type of fractured bone right so this osteoblasts are nothing but the stem cells which will be placed on this polymeric scaffold which is placed on this petri plate like this so this green color one are nothing but the stem cells or as this green color one is nothing but the osteoblasts right and now to this osteoblasts which is present in this polymeric scaffold what you are going to add you are going to add the third components which are called as signaling molecules so growth factors hormones and morphogenetic factors and even the collagen fibers will also be added to this particular type of uh, what we say this polymeric scaffold which consists of this osteoblasts right and now what happens and in the next step what you what happens is that the cells are present in a small quantity right so here normally a large quantity of stem cells will be isolated but here only small quantity will be added because you are going to select a particular type of cells which are highly active and that highly active stem cells will be placed in this polymeric scaffold which is present in this petri plate and now to this petri plate you are going to add this uh, signaling molecules all of these signaling molecules this pink color one yellow color one and as well as this blue color one nothing but the signaling molecules the growth factors hormones and morphogenetic proteins so all of this will be added to this and now what happens is that i have said you at the beginning of the video itself so this scaffold as well as the signaling molecules will acts as a nutrient medium for the cells so how it acts as a nutrient medium for the cells in such a way that that cells will use as that particular nutrient medium the nutrients which is present on this scaffold as well as the nutrients which is present in this in the form of this growth factors all of this will be utilized by the stem cells and once it get utilized then it undergoes proliferation the stem cells will undergoes proliferation so how the proliferation occurs what is mean by proliferation proliferation is nothing but the process which undergoes the cell division rapid cell division so the number of the cells the number of the stem cells has been increased because of the proliferation of the cells so how it got increased because the nutrient medium is present it utilizes the nutrient medium in such a way that the stem cells will gain energy from the nutrient medium and it will get proliferated it it will get cell the cell, cell division process occurs in the stem cells and the number of the quantity of that cells will be increased right and now in the next step what you are going to do is that you are going to remove this polymeric scaffold which is present in this petri plate and make sure that the polymer scaffold consists of the stem cells right and here the quantity of the growth factors hormones proteins collagen has been decreased why because this stem cells utilized all of this nutrients for the development process for the growth process i mean to increase the quantity of this back of these stem cells right so for that process the growth factors and all of the signaling molecules uh, quantity will get decreased because the number of the stem cells has been increased and now you are going to remove that particular type of polymer scaffold from this petri plate which consists of the stem cells and now what you are going to do with this polymer scaffold now you are going to heal that particular type of polymer scaffold which consists of this stem cells to this fractured bone so this is a fractured bone right and at the particular place this is a place where the bone has got fractured and to that place you are going to heal that polymer scaffold which consists of the stem cells right so this is called a healing and within 20 days to 1 month 20 days to 30 days the this fractured bone will get converted into a normal bone so this is how the healing occurs this is how the normal uh, what we say repairing of the tissues occurs by applying the tissue engineering process so this is a process whole process which occurs in the hospital which will be conducted by the doctors to undergo the process of tissue engineering to convert this fractured bone into a normal bone back again 
so this is a process which has been done in this tissue engineering and hope you would like this video and the notes for this topic will be given in the whatsapp group and the invite link of that whatsapp group will be given in the description box so by using that link you can join us in the whatsapp group and if you have any doubts regarding this video you can comment in the comment box and if you like my explanation just do like and subscribe and if you have any doubts regarding this video you can comment in the comment box and each subscribes each subscribers counts for me thank you